Hello, hope everybody's doing well and staying safe out there, man. It's a jungle out there. That's for sure. You got to be strong. Only the strong survive. Today, I want to do a story about just some of the businesses that had to pay a street tax to the Chicago Outfit. I'm sure there's many more. If you know of any that were extorted or paying street tax, please enter into the comments. Also, please hit the like button, subscribe, and share with your friends. Here we got this clown, government informant, rat, snitch, mole, and porn king of Chicago. Red Wamet owned and operate a pawn shop in Old Town and used to pay the Chicago outfit. Guys like um, Joey Lombardi. Back in the late 80s, early 90s, the Lake Theater in downtown Oak Park, they were paying street tax to the Chicago outfit. Lenny Patrick ordered uh, Mario Renone, James Lavelli, and Nick Gio to firebomb the Lake Theater. Nick Gio, I'll never forget, I seen him uh, during the Gus Alex trial, and he stood by Gus Alex, actually asked the judge if he could look out for Gus Alex while they were locked up together. Now, one of the oldest mobbed-up strip clubs and one of my favorites in Chicago is the Admiral Theater. They were on Lawrence Avenue. And not too long ago, I actually seen a show by Stormy Daniels. Hell of a show. The Admiral Theater has paid street tax in Chicago Alpha for years. And at one point, Frankie Schweiss, the German, this was one of the places he personally collected from. Now, a huge target. Uh, for the Chicago outfit were some of these car dealerships. And during the Gus Alex trial, Mario Renone here on the right and Nick Gio were going into car dealerships pretending to buy high-end cars. But were actually there threatening extreme violence, extorting two three dollars $300,000. And in one incident, Mario told the car salesman he would plant his whole family in the garden in the front. Another shady place we used to go to back in the day uh, was Condessa Del Mar, right there on South Cicero Avenue in Elsip. It was owned by this uh, crooked Greek guy, like kind of like a mob associate, and he was definitely uh, paying street tax to Chicago outfit. Back then, Marco D'Amico would deliberately go there on nights when they had big weddings because he knew that's when the best time when most of the cash would be there. Here's the Drury Lane in Oak Brook, Illinois. Frank Sinatra and several other uh, big-time names performed here. They used to pay street tax to the Chicago Outfit. And back when Sam Carlisi was boss of the Chicago Outfit, uh, Sam increased the monthly dues. They refused. And little Tony Zizzo, Jimmy Marcel, and others firebomb the Drury Lane Theater. Now, in Chicago, you got Boys Town, right there in the Belmont Sheffield neighborhood, just south of Wrigleyville. And this was an easy target, easy victim for the Chicago outfit. Every single gay bar in Boys Town was paying street tax and protection to the Chicago outfit. I forget uh, which specific outfit guys extorted some of these clubs, but uh, the outfit controlled all of Boys Town. Now here's Lee Manong. This is like the capital of Chinatown. And Frankie the German Schweiss here on the right. And Angela Lepetri, a boss of the 26th Street crew. They extorted $10,000 a month from Leong. And they used some of that money to build the Italian Social Club in Bridgeport. And also to pay off a lot of cops, judges, and aldermen in the first ward. On the orders of Angelo Lepetria, Nick Calabrese, like a soldier, followed those orders. He cut off a puppy's head. He took some dead mice, tied nooses around their neck, put them on the car, and he blew out Victor Cacciatore's back window, all in an attempt to extort $2 million out of Victor Cacciatore. Victor Cacciatore ran to Angelo Lepetria for help. The whole time, the hook was behind it. Now, here's Connie's Pizza right there in Bridgeport on Archer Avenue, one of the largest pizzerias in Chicago. And during the Family Secrets trial, 
the owner, a good friend of Frank Calabrese, testified that he hired Frankie as a spotter to keep an eye on all the drivers. And also, Nicky F. and a few outfit guys came in there, tried to extort a couple of hundred thousand dollars out of him. He went to Frank Calabrese Sr. for help. The whole time, Frank Calabrese Sr. was behind the extortion scheme. This coward here, the late Nick Calabrese, he basically destroyed what was left of the Chicago outfit with his testimony at the Family Secrets trial. And part of his testimony, he said that him and his best friend, John Fecarata, who he later killed, that they had around a dozen dentists in Chicago that were on their payroll. And he went on to say how dentists were easy victims of the outfit because they always needed money. Now, just imagine not only the stress of owning a bar or restaurant, but you guys, guys like Jimmy I coming over every month to collect their ends. One of the seediest late night clubs back in the day was the Fire Alarm right there on Ogden Avenue in Cicero. And for all of us that remember that we're there at 2, 3, 4 in the morning, we were definitely up to no good. But the Fire Alarm used to pay street tax to Jimmy I and the Chicago Outfit. Now, how many people remember this place? Right there on 63rd in Harlem, Prime and Tender. This was the best top teen dance club back in the 80s. You can see a long line of teenagers waiting to get in. We went here every single Sunday night. Nick the Greek, the owner, paid the Chicago outfit $3,000 a month to keep this joint up and running. Now, right across the street from Prime and Tender on 63rd in Harlem was one of the only gay bars on the south side. All the other gay bars were up north in Boys Town. And my uncle actually owned this place. This place was a gold mine. Thursday through Sunday nights, jam-packed, cars outside. And at least once a month, my uncle had to give cash envelopes to Chicago outfit heavyweight Wayne Bach. This guy's partner in crime was Frankie the German. Now here you got the Candlelight Theater, high-end dinner playhouse in Summit, Illinois. This was owned and operated by Chicago Outfit associate Pete Altieri. And every week, Pete Altieri paid the guy on the right, Sal Bastone, $600 a week. Uh, this is a place that Freddie Bell, Dean Martin, and others used to perform at. Another one of my stopping grounds, we used to love this place for weddings, parties, receptionists, funerals. They had a great nightclub, excellent restaurant, nice late night bar. He had Nico's right there on South Harlem Avenue. And years ago, Jack Cerrone used to get monthly uh, payments from Nico's from the Greek owners. And then when he went away in the straw man case, John Nonos DeFranzo and Pete Nonos DeFranzo, they picked up the collections from Nico's. Now, going back to the 70s, 80s, and 90s, you got the JC Motel. It was a great place for a four-hour nap. This is where we used to bring our girls. They used to pay the Chicago outfit monthly street tax for years. And during the Family Secrets trial, Nick Calabrese testified that his older brother, Frank Calabrese, and Tony Borsellino would come in here every month. This was one of their stops where they would make collections. Now, going back 70s, 80s, 90s, even a little bit today, the Chicago Outfit controlled all the bars and restaurants on Rush Street. In one way or another, they were paying street tax, not even counting all the cocaine, uh, the prostitution, and gambling going on. But one legendary guy there on Rush Street was Jay. He was an associate of Chicago Outfit, owned several bars. I did some work for him, and I remember he used to complain about the street tax. Now, back in the glory days of the nightclubs on Rush Street, every single one of them paid an outfit tax to this man here, Little Caesar DeVarco, boss of Rush Street at the time. Places like Eddie Rockets, Faces, PS Chicago, Jillies, BBC, they all paid a street tax. Even till this day, there's a few places that are still under the outfit control. Now, right there in Bridgeview, Illinois, uh, still open today, you got Polecats, a mobbed-up strip club. 
And on the right, an old friend of mine, Bobby Pinozo. I've actually been to Polecats a few times with Bobby, but I had no idea back then what his uh, affiliation or connection was. I found out years later when he got pinched that the owner of um, Polecats was paying the Chicago outfit thousands of dollars a month for protection and security. Now, on 18th in Michigan, he had the Cotton Club right there in the South Loop. I remember seeing Michael Jordan several times pull up in all his high-end sports cars. Joey McCall Lombardo, Jimmy Cozo, and Joe Andriaki, Joe the Builder, used to collect street tax from the owner of the Cotton Club, who Joey knew when they were both locked up. Now, during the Jerry Scalise, Bobby Puglia, and uh, Arthur Rachel, the Genius Trial, they played the tape of a restaurant, Greco's, that um, Jerry Scalise was extorting money out of. And he th- he's on tape threatening the owner of the restaurant that he was going to send his wife pieces of his body in the mail if he didn't pay, scaring the guy to go straight to the FBI. Now, back in the 1970s, 80s, 90s, still a few of them today, you had all those seedy crackhead hotels up and down Mannheim Road, kind of like near the Stone Park, Melrose Park area, where not only did you have the seedy hotels that were paying monthly dues to the Chicago outfit, um, but you had all the drugs and all the prostitution and gambling going up. Now, another easy target for the Chicago outfit were some of these independent trucking guys, especially the one that had sweetheart contracts with the city. They were making millions of dollars, and once the outfit found out about it, they wanted their end. During the Sam Carlisi trial, one of the guys, trucking guys, LaBarbery, actually wore a wire, and Anthony the Hatch was threatened to stab him in the eye with a fork if he didn't pay up. They called it all on tape using violent threats. Now, just about every single fucky-sucky Asian massage parlor in Chicago back then were all paying monthly street tax to the Chicago outfit to stay open. And also, depending on the area, if it was a a mobbed-up neighborhood, every drug dealer in that area was paying some of the outfit guys monthly street tax. Now, 